Hey everybody, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Another active evening going on with the weather here. I was thinking maybe I could have taken a break from streaming, but also I wasn't necessarily expecting a lot of tornadoes over towards Texas, but the weather is full of surprises and I was wrong on this one. But we did have an enhanced risk that was hail driven and there was a 5% tornado threat in all fairness towards Abilene. We also have had a couple tornadoes over here towards Louisiana and even over towards Joplin, Missouri, surprisingly today as well. So it's been a pretty active day. Some of these tornadoes even were ongoing while I was at work. So I'm kind of in a frenzy here also because there's a severe weather threat tomorrow to talk about and then also a slight risk on Monday that we do need to discuss there along with the potential of the days following that precluding into a multi-day outbreak as well another one so like I said kind of in a rock and a hard place there in regards to what to do apologies to anyone that was looking for me to stream the night just I was just kind of in a scramble here trying to figure out what to do so yeah just no point in me hiding in I was just trying to tell you what I was what my plans originally were and how it kind of went the other way but in any case though let's keep the ball rolling here we talked about tomorrow's threat we talked about tonight we're going to get into the details of what happened tonight a little bit but we're also going to mainly be talking about tomorrow's threat and of course the days to follow this is our Monday threat also, by the way. This is what could be the beginning of another multi-day outbreak. Very large 15% area. This is a, the equivalent to a um, slight risk, excuse me, for Monday, this upcoming week. You can see, unfortunately, we have some very familiar areas like Omaha and Lincoln, Nebraska. Once again, we have Wichita, Kansas City in there again. Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Norman, Fort Sill, and Wichita Falls back under the gun yet again. Now, we'll have to keep an eye on this day in particular because there are some features that I've seen with this that do garner my attention a little bit more than previous events. I'll put it that way. Not trying to hype up this event, but definitely seeing some signals that kind of lean into that heightened severe weather threat and the potential for maybe this to be upgraded. So let's go ahead and for the meantime, get into the short term here. So I'm going to move to the HRRR first so we can look at what happened tonight that allowed us to have severe weather. So as you can see right here, our area, our cyclone is actually towards the U.S. Canadian border. And kind of like how yesterday was, we ended up getting like a little glancing blow from these little tails that are forming off of the, off the uh, this elongated trough here. These troughs will, these uh, little tails here all have their own short wave that will go along with that. Short grip wave is an, a great area of lift more often than not when it comes to severe weather. Usually if you can get the other ingredients to come together, the short wave kind of helps all of that get going. And you could look at tonight, you could tell even before six o'clock central here, cause I've actually backtracked a little bit on here. But you can tell by the time, this is just looking more towards current time, these little ripples in the contour line. You can already see them there. That's showing some indi some indications of a short wave. We're not even looking at this from the right height, and I can kind of see it. It becomes even more pronounced by the time we get towards the mid-levels of the atmosphere. That's actually where the short waves will be located. And if you go to 23Z, look at that. There you go. Short waves are basically going to be any of these little areas within our isobars aka contour lines that will have ripples in them like this but fact in the matter is abilene is right here this is where a lot of our activity was located and this was also where our five percent tornado threat is and we see very clear indications of a short wave and then if you go into the low level jet this is the part that kind of had me on the fence about streaming was the fact that we did not have a lot of that low level jet available and it was at a very low number usually you want to see about up to 30 knots of low level jet available and you see it's very few and far in between so these storms popped off in a spot 
where they were able to take advantage of the what would I what I would truly consider is to be a relatively limited environment for tornadoes and made the most of it. In fact, looking at this, you can even see there's not this is not a good skew T or a sounding whatsoever. But like I said, right place in the right time or right place in the wrong time, depending on your perspective. But this is also this video is also, of course, about going into the days ahead here. So we're going to, of course, take a look at tomorrow. It's actually going to be a very similar setup to what we had these last couple of days here. By the time we get towards the evening hours heading towards sunset, you can see it already as this storm system up towards the U.S. Canadian border moves out. Get another one of these little dog leg or tail like features from this trough and with this we're able to get those short waves off the mountains and we're able to get these storms to fire here we can pretty much just go straight to that same time frame on the 700 millibar map where our short waves are located and look at that i mean proof's pretty much in the pudding there so to speak you can see a clearest day short waves abundant Reminds me a lot of the Tuesday setup for sure. We're going to actually try and lock this hour here so that way we can get a look at the low level jet at that same time. And the low level jet actually looks a little bit better in this case than it did today. So I do think that the tornado threat is going to be elevated with this as well. So, like I said, a lot to keep track of in the short range. But like I said, video is also going to be talking about the ranges beyond that point couple other things we'll look at here of course we have great moisture return which is not surprising we've been talking about how we're going to have that continued moisture plume from the gulf just continuing to pump into the southern plains here so a couple other things we'll look at of course instability no surprise there about 2,000 some areas reaching 3,000 plus joules per kilogram explosive environment for thunderstorms and then, of course, we have significant tornado parameter. We have some decent numbers over here towards the Texas Panhandle for tomorrow. I do want to see how these numbers further off to the south end up panning out. But like I said, a lot to cover, almost too much at this point. So we're going to go ahead and get into the longer range here with the GFS. So this is what we have going on with the GFS. Pretty much a similar look on even Saturday where we have a pretty extensive short wave that looks to take over here with this little feature off to the south this is from a subtropical jet and then if you look off to the left of that or off to the west look what you see here this is that big kahuna here that is likely to cause some serious problems here over towards the plains as we had into monday so a couple of things that have gotten my attention with this in particular is for one this trough looks like it's trending towards being negatively tilted which is a key component for severe weather usually when it tilts negatively you have really good forcing something that you need for a point of lift lift is important for thunderstorms also gulf of mexico moisture towards this region abundant already we've been we've known that for a while that's going to continue to be the case then to top it all off when you get that negative tilt not only do you get increased forcing, the wind profiles become more favorable for all hazards of severe weather, including tornadoes. So especially towards the mid to lower levels, we are probably going to be seeing some incredible winds here. So just looking at this right now, I'm even seeing potential evidence of a jet streak here. We have to look a little bit higher into the atmosphere in order to see that. We'll go ahead and go to 300 millibars here to see that. And you can see right here in the red, we're reaching above 100 knots there. So like I said, definitely seeing a lot of parameters that are leaning into what could be a pretty stout severe weather event for Monday for sure. And like I said, this is really what's kind of had me on the fence here on going live tonight on the stream. Like I said, again, if some of you were expecting that and I just didn't show up, this was partially why, because I've been just kind of pulling my hair out as to what to do here. Not literally, of course, but 
yeah, it's just kind of a tough decision to make. So one thing that I've noted here, we have our diffluence here at 500. So we could be seeing some storms fire as early as mid afternoon over towards the central to maybe even northern plains. This is going to be mainly towards Nebraska. And then eventually we'll see increased activity as we get later into the evening. Eventually this threat shifts into the Midwest for the following day, maybe even the Ohio Valley for Tuesday. And then we'll watch a sector of this jet stream break off. And maybe we might see some action towards the Tennessee Valley and maybe even the Southeast. So like I said, pretty active period of weather. Thankfully, after that storm system, we don't see anything super stout starting out with. But as we get further along here, the weather pattern does look like it starts to ramp up further as we move along here. Can't disinclude the Northern Plains and the Ohio Valley in the weeks ahead here too. So have to keep an eye on things from that point. So we're gonna jump over to Monday really quickly. And there's a couple things that I want you to make note of here. I'm gonna have a little still shot of what we're looking at at 96 hours out. And we'll kind of just kind of, We'll kind of just jump back and forth within a certain time range within the next 12 hours on this map here. But what I want you to make note of is on this corner right here, you're going to see the 500 millibar wind profile. And I want you to pay attention to the wind barbs there with this right here. You kind of see that north to south motion going at 700. And then if you do the same thing with 850, look at that. So we have speed and directional shear alike with all three of these maps so like i said this is exactly what you would look for when it comes to a potent, another potential severe weather outbreak maybe a tornado outbreak will this end up being like the one we saw last week on friday i would like to say no but considering the fact that we're 96 hours out and we didn't really have a full idea of what was going to happen that day until the day of all i can really say at this point is just don't let your guard down just Make sure you are keeping an extra close eye on the weather at this point. The goal of this channel is not to instill panic, but make sure that you have an awareness of the weather, so to speak, staying weather aware. But with all the parameters, as I've aforementioned, being in play, especially with the moisture and the surface temps being as they are within the days ahead here, like I said, it's not going to be to anyone's surprise to see severe weather across this region. And like I said, this is going to continue to be a trend as we go further along here. Really abundant moisture return as we head into Wednesday night and even into Thursday. So like I said, potential for a multi-day outbreak once again is there. And it could be multi-regional too. This is not a slow mover. It's not looking like this is going to stall out over one particular region. It could be multiple. Thankfully, after this system passes through, it does look like we get a little bit of a reprieve over here for some of us over here in the plains in regards to severe weather dew points take a little bit longer to recover but of course we're looking pretty far out into the future and this of course can easily change just as i say that things can downtrend they can also uptrend so we try to tell the truth as best as we can around here even though we're our truth is dependent on how the weather performs which is on its own agenda <laughs> and in any case though eventually as we would expect Moisture returns do improve as we get later into the month. So the reprieve from severe weather will not last forever, of course, as we know. But with all the parameters we have given, let's go ahead and take a look at what our radar could look like in the long range here. Go ahead and just go ahead and pull up our simulated radar here. And you can see the storm systems one after the other. These areas are low pressure with a counterclockwise spin. We'll slow this down a little bit so you can see it a little more clearly. Here comes our big system around the 6th right there. Then as we continue to move forward, we see storm system after storm system reach over to the Tennessee and Ohio valleys, eventually the southeast, before we eventually put our focus back towards the plains here. That being said, that's going to pretty much do it for this video. Like I said, I'm sorry this one was kind of all over the place. Like I said, there's a lot that we're covering right now on this end. And then, of course, there's other behind-the-scenes stuff that 
we're doing as well here if you want to see more of that make sure you become a member but that being said i hope you guys have a great rest of your evening here and i will see you probably tomorrow afternoon we're probably going to go live for that one especially since we missed this one tonight again sorry about that and i'll see you soon time metal weatherman signing off have a good night folks